What's up, folks? What's up? I don't know if anyone is out here ready to uh, do this live YouTube, uh, but I am here. I just want to give it a few minutes uh, for anyone to join, if you're going to want to join. My name is Dan Dillman, third generation treasure hunter, mystic, paranormal UFO investigator. I like to say I'm a philosopher uh, and definitely uh, a connoisseur of truth a seeker of truth and a sharer of the things that I discover and have been discovered by my family. Once again, just welcoming people. I'm trying to figure out how, let me know if you can hear me, by the way, gosh, I don't even know if it uh, looks like possibly two people are on right now. If you can hear me, give me some kind of signal, a thumbs up, a hello, a something. Awesome. Super immune builders. Aloha. Aloha, brother. Thank you so much. Awesome. So I'm going to believe that you can hear me. So tonight we're going to be talking about Estevanico and the seven cities of gold. So are the seven cities of gold a legend, a myth, something fake and phony? Let me know what you think. First and foremost, uh, obviously I, I, have a thought on it myself. <laughs> Let's see. We got. Uh, if I'm saying, forgive me if I mispronounce your 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 handle. Um, Moby One Colt. Nice to uh, have you uh, join. Uh, Aaron's Energy Three Thirteen. Thank you so much for joining. Um, give this a few more seconds here. Wet my whistle, so to speak. I'm new to the live stuff. I don't come with any notes, so I'm not calling this a, a, a scholarly mission where I'm going to give you necessarily exact dates, but we are going to talk about the seven cities of gold. Are they myth? Are they legend? You know, uh, I sent you an email and I'd like to connect with you more to tell you more about my story connected to your grandfather to grandfather David of the Hopi. So, yeah, uh, somehow you can, uh, by the way, you can contact me at info at montezumastreasure.com. Reach out to me. I try to be responsive and respond. So, uh, or montezumastreasure.com is my website. You should be able to find the contact info there so that you can get me an email and then, well, then we can talk. You can find me on Facebook. I think my personal Facebook is under, um, uh, Facebook slash I am Minister X. Uh, and <laughs> that's another uh, adventure. I, I could always, I could tell you, you know, that the X stands for the placeholder, that that name, that uh, the individual unique name that we all have. My name can't really be Dan if there's a million Dans out there. Right. Um, I must have a unique name to my soul self. That's, an, that's another story. You didn't sign up for that today. So definitely reach out to me at uh, info at montezumastreasure.com or find me on Facebook. Uh, also, Dillman Family on Instagram. Please subscribe. Please share this with folks. I'm going to try to do more stuff. This, this is the live. I, I like to do my videos, too, that are a little more professional and and uh, lay some things out really solid and in a nice timeline. But Estevanico or my grandfather would call him Estevanico the Black. He was a Moor. He was an amazing dude. History does not give this dude the credit that he deserves for his intellect, for his knowledge of the stars and medicine. I mean, it's really, really uh, amazing. Excuse me. So let's see, uh, I sent you an email from Orion. Oh man, my family was friends with Robert Shabir. Okay, right on. Uh, if Send it again. If you just sent it, then I'll, I'll see it later tonight. If you sent it a while ago and I didn't respond, please send it again tonight so I can find you and respond to you. Yeah, Robert Shrewsbury was a good dude. We were cool. Um, and he was a good dude. And uh, he is in the other dimension right now, as you may be aware. Uh, but we were working together on something recently on, on, a, on, a, on a property in southern Utah. And he was a good dude. Lots of... Uh, that's great information. And, and, and he knew my grandfather and he respected my grandfather and uh, whatnot. So let's let's 
let's get to talking about Estevanico. Estevanico in about 1527, 1528 was with Cabeza de, ba de Vaca. I'll probably just be calling him de Vaca. And these guys were on uh, the Navarra's expedition, I believe, of 1527. And they shipwrecked in like 1528 in the Gulf of Texas. And what does this have to do with the seven cities of gold? Well, we're going to get there. Um, and I'm going to try to pay attention. Uh, if anyone, we are each unique divine sparks. Amen to that one. I'm going to try to try to piece this together for you guys. Um, but they shipwrecked. Now, keep in mind, 1528 clearly is, you know, about 10 years after the Cortez Montezuma adventures. So this is after Cortez Montezuma time, 1519 through 1521 or what have you. So these guys shipwreck and they are having a hell of a time navigating, you know, from where they, they wrecked and, and, and surviving. And really what ends up happening is there's probably a couple hundred people, I believe, on this expedition, but really only a handful of people kind of make it through this eight year adventure, this journey through the Americas that for them was unknown. Now, where history agrees on this subject of Estevanico and Davaca is they agree they shipwrecked in the 1528. They agree that they got lost in the Americas for about eight years. That's not really in dispute. But they're at least nowadays. Now, before, you know, when my grandfather and my uncles and my family, we talk about saying that, you know, that we had proof and evidence that Devaca and Estevanico had gone to not just New Mexico, but Arizona, Utah, Nevada, Colorado, had been in the whole area, specifically the, for sure the Four Corners area. You know, we would get shut down or people tell us that we're telling fairy tales, we're making shit up. Um, but at least now a lot of scholars will at least say, you know, we don't know the true route. And that I respect more than someone telling me that it's not possible because they weren't there. And we have found evidence and proof, not just in some of the, the native legends, but physical evidence and proof we have found that we are convinced, in our opinion, that it is absolutely Devaca and Estevanico. So here's the deal. For eight years, Estevanico and Devaca are quote unquote lost. I think that's the wrong terminology to use because basically what ended up happening is these guys became friends with the natives. They became medicine men and healers amongst the natives. That's a pretty big transition, you know, uh, to happen. And they were, they were friends with the natives. They were absolutely against the Spanish being, uh, you know, uh, being, mean to them, hurting them, killing them, subjecting them to slavery. They were they were against all that. Now, technically, the first two years, Devaca and Estevanico were slaves of the natives. <laughs> they say that some, you know, giant natives, by the way, and they had escaped. But once again, seven cities of gold. I'm just going to throw this in here. I promise you there's a connection between the seven cities of Cibola and the seven cities of gold and Estevanico. And so, but it's important to know that these guys became friends with the natives, became medicine men, and they were privy to sacred locations all throughout the Four Corners area and greater because they were friends, medicine men, healers. They were shown places that they, that the natives would never show to any other, you know, European, Spanish, or white man. They had gained the trust of the natives. They had fought with the natives against the Spanish. They had defended them. And, and once again, they were considered brothers. And so they had unique insights into the Four Corners area and into the Americas and the Grand Canyon that others didn't have. So here's the deal, because once again, this is not man. You guys following me? Are you with me? Or, or am I talking to myself? And that's okay. Someone will probably watch this video at some point. But let me let let me know or if you're with me or if I'm being too scattered and I haven't, you know, left you some tidbits. Hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Thumbs up. That works for me. So here is Estevanico. Here's the vodka. 
after their adventures, which are many. And Devaka wrote a book called The Relaxion, and it was kind of a diary of his adventures. At least it was the diary of things that he wanted to share and also of the things that the king would allow him to share in his book. Because when they were rescued is the word they use, but they weren't rescued. I would say they probably, you know, history, fate, had them run into some Spanish, you know, conquistadors and explorers who, who found them, recognized them, and they said, ah, we're, you know, we thought you guys were dead. I took them back to Mexico and took them, you know, took them there to the viceroy or whoever was in control at that time. But they got, you know, basically, Devaca got shipped back to Spain. And man, it's a whole nother story I want to get into and so much I want to share. So I, I got to stop myself. I'm going to stop myself. I'm just going to tell you this. Devaca went back to Spain. He wanted to come back to the Americas, not South America. He wanted to come back to the Four Corners area. He wanted to be back in the Mexico, New Me uh, Mexico, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Nevada is where Devaca wanted to go. And the same with Estevanico. They didn't want to leave their brothers. And in fact, there's a whole nother bigger plot. I'll make it another video because I got some badass evidence that is their own evidence that they try to use against Devaca. But here it is. They did not let Devaca come back to the Americas. The king wouldn't let him. But the king somehow has this idea. Now, how would he have gotten this idea? Because there was another snitch who was with him. So there was three people, I believe. There was one extra guy. It could have been two. I should have my facts here so that I can let you know their names. But you could do probably do an easy Google search and find out who the other cat was that was with Devaca and Estevanico. So there was a snitch among them who decided to get favor with the king and said, hey, man, these guys were medicine men and healers and became friends with them. And they showed them all kinds of riches and places and sacred places. And so, King, I'm just letting you know, take care of me because I'm telling you the truth. And these guys don't want to tell you shit because they're not down for the King of Spain. They're down for their Native American brothers and sisters. That's a fact. And that's why Devaca wasn't let, allowed to come back. Now, the king didn't kill his ass. They, they tried, you know, they, they put him to trial to try to say he was causing treason. There's a whole nother video we're going to do because it's deep and history doesn't report this. But I think it's awesome that we have this, this, this part of the story that's missing, uh, that's super important to this whole adventure. So the Bach is not allowed to come back. But guess who the king of Spain forces to lead Fray Marcos, who was leading court, who was to go ahead of Coronado to find these seven cities of gold, these seven cities of gold, because the snitch, <laughs> because the guy who was only down for himself uh, went and told that they did see that we saw these places. We were there. And, and Estevanico was absolutely there and Devaca was there. They could take you to him. Devaca wasn't allowed. They were scared that Devaca would lead the natives to revolt against them. And so they couldn't trust. They didn't want, the king said, no, your, your ass is not going back to the Americas. But Estevanico was forced to be the, um, the, the 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 scout, the navigator, the leader, right? They, I mean, they sent him. So Fray Marcos, Coronado, you've heard of Coronado, Coronado searching for the seven cities of gold. They didn't make this shit up, seven cities of gold on their own, right? They weren't in Spain talking about, man, there's seven cities of gold. We got to go find it. <laughs> it's because of this dummy went and started talking too much. The good news is that that guy couldn't show him because there was a time when the, I think when they, uh, they lost contact with that dude and whatnot, but he knew that he, that Estevanico and Devaca had been shown these things. Excuse me. So 
Estevanico is forced, unfortunately, to lead this expedition, Fray Marcos, and then Coronado behind him, to follow behind him for the seven cities of gold. So here is a major, major connection. They don't, you know, no one's, matter of fact, I don't even know how much of history records and says that Estevanico, you know, was the one who took him. Why are there no books written on Estevanico? There's no real books written on Estevanico. They're only, we, and same, you know, where we interpret what Devaca says. And of course, we know Estevanico was with Devaca the whole time. So Devaca's story is Estevanico's story. But he was, you know, as, uh, as a, um, you know, slave of the king, he was not allowed to... Uh, to one, not take him. They basically threatened to kill him. He didn't want to take him. And they, they, they of course, say, hey, we're gonna, just going to kill your ass. You're going to take us to the seven cities of gold. You're going to lead this expedition. You're going to show us all the sites. And every site you get to, Fray Marcos tells him, every site you get to, you're going to send us back across. You're going to send us back across. And the, the bigger the cross, if it's a small cross, little riches we expect as we come behind you and to go get them. And the bigger the cross, we're, you know, we know there's more riches. Now, Estevanico was going to do all that he could to trick the Spanish from hurting the natives. These were his, this was his family. This was his family. And he understood the plight of the natives. He had been, you know, taken as a slave from Morocco, most likely, to the Spanish and, be, and and was a slave of uh, Durantus, I believe. So come on, if you if you or me were taken slave by a an empire, a military army, we're not going to love them, and we're not going to willingly, at least not in our hearts. You know, we might tell, them, yeah, 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 whatever you want, but in our hearts and our minds, we're going to do everything we can to foil them from hurting our friends or do whatever we can to mislead them in defining what they're looking for because they're just gonna do more harm. So hopefully I'm making sense and not rambling. Well, you know what, shit, I say this all the time. I am rambling, but I hopefully I'm ram rambling coherently of what I am, the picture that I'm painting for you. So Estevanico leads them, but he tells the natives as he is coming before the Spanish, and he lets them know what's up. He goes, look, these fools are expecting me to take them to the sacred places. And I'm not doing that. But what I want you to do is they're going to come here after me. I want you to get a white cross and paint a white cross or carry a cross, make a cross, and just tell them, lie to them, basically, and tell them you worship this cross and they probably won't kill you. And so Estevanico was going ahead of them, letting them know that so that he could prepare them for how the Spanish were going to act as they came into their villages and towns. And so Estevanico was working to protect the natives, and he was working to make sure that Fray Marcos and Coronado never got to the seven cities of gold. So now let's get to the Zuni. Now here is something that, that I think nobody has ever said. Again, I... You know, I just really want to share my family's, we'll call them theories, that's fine. But I want to share something that I don't believe anybody has ever said in the history of mankind, at least talking about this saga of time when it comes to Montezuma's treasure, Seven Cities of Gold, Estevanico, Davaca. Uh, nobody has ever said what I'm about to tell you right now. We'll be back right after this. No, I'm just kidding. That's what the damn TV shows do to us all the time. But here's what I'm going to tell you. That the Zuni, I, I got to say this first. I got to say this first. The story goes, history says that as Estevanico came to the Zuni, that the, that, uh, the Zuni killed him, took some of his items, sent their scouts back to Fray Marcos and said, hey, we killed your man 
and we're going to kill you too. So you guys better get to stepping and get out of here because there ain't no gold here for you. There's no treasure. And we just killed your man. That's how much we respect what you guys are doing around here. And so Frey Marcos, I don't believe Frey Marcos would have believed it if A, the Zuni scouts, warriors didn't have personal possessions of Estevanico. So they did. Ah, so embarrassing that I'm, I think I might be burping on camera live. Um, that And uh, we hypothesize, we believe that Estevanico had his leg chopped off. The Zuni chopped off his leg. Now, the, of course, the story that the Spanish say and that is part of the Zuni thing is, that, oh, yeah, Estevanico came here and we killed his ass and we sent his... his uh, his personal things to Frey Marcos and told told him to get to stepping. And this, my laptop's bouncing all over the place because I'm so excited. Um, and told them to go. So Frey Marcos was scared and he said, screw that shit. We're out of here. They killed us, Vanico, and you know, the whole army, they're gonna kill us. And so Frey Marcos went back, turned around. That was it. End of the story. Zuni Nation. Basically, that was it. He was on the top of the hill. He says. He goes back and says, I think I saw the city. It was glistening. Um, but you know what? They killed him. I'm not going back. <laughs> they killed Estevanico and blah, blah, blah. And so, so that's the story, right? But no, that's not the truth. You know why? Because here's the part that no one in the, in the world has ever connected. Nobody has ever connected this truth and I'm about to reveal it to you right now, is that the black kachina of the Zuni is Estevanico. I'm telling you right now, it gives chills up my spine. I feel, I, in its divine knowledge, folks, I'm going to tell you straight up, it is divine cosmic mind that has even revealed this and shared this with me, that the black kachina of the Zuni is Estevanico. And Estevanico was a good man, the natives, the oral tradition by some of the natives are that Estevanico came into the fold of the natives, lived to be an old man, had family. That's the other story. The story for the Spanish was we killed his ass and there's nothing here for you people. But the truth is that Estevanico was a son, was straight up a child of the sun. He was a good spirit. He was a holy man. He was a good man. He was a, an astrologer. He was a straight navigator. He was a medicine man. He was well educated. And he was family with the natives. And Estevanico is the black kachina of the Zuni. And nobody, and I don't want anyone to ever, ever take uh you know try to try to take that that um that knowledge and not know that it came from the holy spirit man it came from cosmic mind and it's the truth because again even the natives the pueblo revolt that happened you know gosh i think it was the 1600s in pompeii who led the pueblo revolt was said to be a descendant of estevanico we believe that we found the resting place of Estevanico. If you watch our documentary, Secrets of the Stone Tablets in Search of Montezuma's Treasure, it's, it's on my YouTube page for free. We believe that we found Estevanico. We believe we found his resting place. It was um, one of the one of the archaeologists from BYU. Um, I don't know if it was Joel Janikowski or there was a few other guys and they had told the judge, the owners of the property, that it was an African American man. Uh, the one of the, and he was a fairly big guy. You know, he was about seven feet tall. That is also what the legends of the Zuni say that Estevanico was of large statute. You know, that he was a, a tall dude, and that he was missing a leg. And that's the story that we have from the natives and from the oral. We have gotten. Uh, that Estevanico actually allowed his leg to be chopped off because they needed to sell his death to Frey Marcos for real, right? Because you have to imagine these guys are journeying thousands of miles, <coughs> hundreds and then thousands of miles, 
on a mission for what they are convinced because they had the snitch, the intelligence, they had the intelligence from this other guy who survived the Navarra's expedition with the Vaca and Estevanico saying, that, nah, this shit is real and they know about it and they've seen it and they know about it. And so Estevanico had to absolutely make it 100% solid in Frey Marcos's mind because Frey Marcos wouldn't turn around if he didn't believe Estevanico was dead. They'd keep on cooking. But he believed that he was dead because of body part and his personal items. And that right there tells you the connection because once again, I want to bring it full circle. The king of Spain forced Estevanico to lead this expedition. Why would the king of Spain do that? for the seven cities of gold. You know, these, these guys were no fools. I'm not claiming that, that, that they had uh, divine intelligence, but they surely weren't stupid. And uh, they also wouldn't waste their resources back then. Just because he's the king of Spain doesn't mean he's got unlimited funds for himself. You know, they're being very um, cautious and, 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 um, and, you know, in their terms and their words, wise about how they spent their resources to go after things, right? Of course, they never found the seven, seven cities of gold because then no one's going to lead them to them. And Devaca died with this knowledge. So Devaca had this knowledge back in Spain, you know, um, but he wasn't telling, you know, he wasn't telling them anything. But I think one of the, the major connections, so three major connections to the reality of seven cities of gold besides I, there's many other things but just keeping it within the realm of 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 a recent spanish estevanico time frame is you got the you, you've got estevanico and davaca you've got the king of spain you got coronado you got fray marcos and that's what they're looking for is the seven cities of gold and then then you've got the black kachina the Zuni. And I'm telling you right now that the, the Zuni, I pray that there's a Zuni elder out there who know who knows the truth, not the bullshit that the Spanish tell, but who knows the truth about what we're saying, what I'm saying right now, that Estevanico represents the Black Kachina of the Zuni. I think that shit's deep. I think it's deep and I think it's uh, super important Estefanico being of African descent or more, you know, I, I consider us all brothers and sisters uh, of light. We're in the same universe. Um, shoot, even if we're in a different universe, I'm convinced that we're still in, in, in the all at all, which is, which is that which is. Um, but yeah, so what do you guys think? What do you think? Any comments? Shit, have I lost you guys? I may be talking to myself here. Ties to the Aztec and the giant meteors they're finding deep underground in the Southwest. Man, let me tell you something. The Aztecs were subterranean masters. The, the mercury that they, that, that they had under their temples. Now, this is a whole nother story, right? That's why I'm convinced through, through the wisdom that they had. Look, if they if the Aztecs could tell me the Earth's got a wobble every 24,000 years and, tell, and can tell me alignments, can align things in celestial time frames and mathematics and astronomy and wisdom, no doubt I'm convinced they had technology, just like the Vedas of ancient India. There ain't no way the ancient India had flying machines and the Aztecs didn't. I'm telling you, there's just a part of this history that they don't want you to know. I'm also going to tell you that, you know, I I, I, I got to save it for another one because I'll, I'll, I'll get off and I'll share too much. But no doubt about it. We don't know, at least history, I won't say we don't know because we know. And those of you who are willing to open your mind, your heart, and your soul unto divine reality and universal consciousness, even in this moment, I can't speak, think, move without consciousness, thinking, speaking, moving the form. And common sense for me says, 
we are all connected, even though we appear as these individual sparks. But the point is, is this information is here. Life is mysterious and adventurous. It's meant for us to discover things. It's meant for us to have other mysteries. Why? Because it would be boring as hell if we just sat here and, and uh, don't get me wrong, it's nice to actually sit there and meditate, sleep, rest. But there's a time for rest and there's a time for adventure and there's a time for mystery and a time for all things. As a matter of fact, I'm a dude of seasons. But the bottom line is this. Yes, there are amazing truths being revealed. <laughs> yes, I'm glad. So very thank you. Thank you. Um, you guys have any questions for me? Any anything else you want to? I mean, there's so much stuff going on. There, there's been there's been some new um so many different things going down. Lots of signs in the sky. Lots of signs going on in the sky. If you're paying attention, you know, there's more and more video being captured. I think um, God, I forget dude's name. Um, Jeremy Corbin, Corbin, maybe, you know, he's just captured and shared, someone shared with him some, some new, uh, unidentified, uh, unidentified flying objects, not in the shape of a UFO, but more having some kind of form to it. Um, and I have witnessed numerous, I am a personal witness. I say this without being worried or concerned that anyone's going to think anything of me, uh, but I have witnessed the metallic spears, you know, balls, spheres, however, hopefully I'm speaking correctly, that were just above me 20, 30 feet, that absolutely no sound, absolutely no noise whatsoever, and just hovering there for a Matter of fact, I was like, I'll tell one story. I was at Great America. This is a, a theme park in California, in the Bay Area. And my kids were on a ride when they were younger, so it was a while ago. And I was sitting there waiting for them while they were going on their waiting in line for the ride. It's a beautiful day. I was looking up as I often do, and right out of the cloud, just the perfect ball, sphere, silver, metallic looking. You know, I didn't touch it, so I don't know if it was metallic, but it was like a mirror, man. And it just hovered there for 10, 15 minutes. And I just sat there and looked at it. I didn't have any smartphones then to pop a picture. And I didn't even have a camera to take a picture then. But I sat there and witnessed it. And then I told my wife, she saw it. And then poof, it just shot up through the clouds. Now, I will say that Moffett Field is not too far from that. And that's, it's possible our government has that technology. Uh, if you believe Bob Lazar, which I kind of do, is that our government has been in possession of sim uh, of technology. I will say this, and of course, you know, we, we've now transcended past what I signed uh, signed up this live stream for today, uh, which was the Estevanico and the Seven Cities of Gold, but I don't mind uh, stepping into this, but um, let's see, the ancient future ancestors returning to come harvest, jellyfish, absolutely. Listen, there is NASA footage of of uh, above atmosphere, I believe it's NASA footage, to where there are uh, uh, that these jelly objects that you're talking about that are even coming into our atmosphere, they're actually you see them in space, outside of the atmosphere. Uh, you know, I haven't been outside of the atmosphere uh, in the three dimensional realm, so I can't tell you if there's really oxygen up there or not. But anyway, th the reality is is these objects these looking to be organic, kind of like jellyfish, existing up in the higher atmosphere. And so for them to be coming down here is absolutely possible. I will also say this, is that, um, matter of fact, it's right, where is it on my board? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring my laptop here just real quick. Don't worry, I'm not going that way. And right here, you see this panel here? And I don't have the name of it. I forget. I'd have to pull up my notes. But this panel here that's got the helicopter, uh, the Egyptian hieroglyphics that were found in the one chamber. You guys could probably tell me the, the name of where that was found. But I have my own unique spin on what that is. I don't believe that they had 
jets that look like that back then, I believe their technology was way doper than that. I believe that they were giving us a picture of our future, of our time, of our days, and important moments in in time and history that they were saying, pay attention to, and you're going to see these objects at this time. And I believe that they were talking about, excuse me, what was to come. I just ate dinner and had this coffee before I jumped on here. Um, and so I believe that they were vision questing, man. They, they were sending the signal. It's also possible. Here's an alternate history. Here's an alternate theory on the ancient Vedas and, and all of their technology. They also, all of that stuff, talking about their technology and the stuff that was happening back then is actually for now. They were telling of what was to come. Open your mind, op oh, oh, right? And what does what do my ancient natives say the end of this world would be done with fire? What do the Vedas say uh, when the great wars and shit were happening? Even with the Anunnaki, you know, those stories. You know, I'm not saying 100%. It's possible that that happened then. It is possible. I'm just giving you the alternate thing that keeps rising within my consciousness is that those stories from the ancients were warnings to us for today. Now, you and I can be aware of that and we could do our part. Uh, it's just up to our other brothers and sisters to do their part and to not be playing these stupid games of, of war and all that kind of shit. Uh, the tether experiment, a Jewish Catholic state in early medieval America, a mining colony. What do you know about the connection and the Davidic bloodline in the Americas? Well, you know, there are lots of things that I do know that, that I'm not willing to share right now, but if that's a thing that you would like for me to talk about, I'm, I'm happy to share some of those things. Look, I can get deep and share with you, and a lot of you are already probably hip to this, but there are people who are walking among us who have been walking among us for generations and still look young and haven't aged. I mean, you go look, explain, ex, you know, you can have an explanation and say, oh, people are born and they just look the same. I mean, there, it, it, there appears to be images of Sylvester Stallone 500 plus years ago in a painting. And it looks just like Sylvester today. We can talk on some of that stuff. Are those the same individuals? Are they, you know, I had someone, uh, I was having this conversation and someone tried to tell me, oh, they're doing consciousness transfer. They, they figured out how to transfer their consciousness. I mean, being born in this form is a transferring of consciousness into this form, right? Everybody born into this world, into this form, into their form is consciousness being born into this. So it's absolutely, there's a few, few explanations. I call them, you know, I'm a very simple dude, common sense dude. A, okay, they're, they are genetically reproducing, you know, test tube babying new bodies and transferring consciousness. I don't think that's it. Um, we got people like St. Germain, who is, there's too many dots, too many stories, too many witnesses to just say it's bullshit. And in all reality, from what I believe our science understands today, when I say our science, kind of accepted science that is on TV and teaching you in your schools, that we are all capable of living forever in the sense that, like, we don't know why we don't. Be because our cells are constantly reproducing, regenerating, renewing. I can tell you the ancient sages of the ages have demonstrated eternal existence. I'm convinced of that. Jesus Christ transfigured into the light body, into his light body before he was ever crucified. 
That's another subject. We have the rainbow light body. We have all kinds of teachings of, of, of eternal existence. We have biblical stories. We have other stories. So I, I've gotten off. Uh, hopefully I haven't turned some of you off who might be here just, just for treasure. But shoot, this stuff is treasure. Um, yep. Alchemy. And what is the alchemy? What is the transfiguration? And first of all, I'm convinced all is mind, right? Uh, all of us, before we consciously at least actively took a step to do something today you thought about it you you mentally projected it and so we are doing that for sure and even right here as you can tell even though i'm moving my lips i'm speaking i'm thinking there's activity happening in the invisible realm that you don't see and i point here well it's more than just here so um anyway uh, i've uh i've I've gone too far tonight, far further than I planned. And, and then I also haven't gone anywhere. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to this channel. Hell, I don't even know why I'm asking you to do that. If you're motivated to do it, do it. I don't, on one hand, I don't give a shit if you subscribe or not, but it'd be hella dope if you did so that we can keep on rolling and doing other things. In other words, I don't, I don't need you to subscribe, but if, but if you do, that's dope. And I appreciate it. I guess I'll say that. Um, I am, I am trying to just, there's so much, there's so many people out there over the years who have taken my grandfather's research, my uncle's uh, research and findings, our findings, our discoveries. And because we were so hush, hush, we weren't sharing with the world. A lot of these people stole, really stole our shit, stole our story, stole, stole our findings or stole our theories or tried to Sam and, and it's just you know, for me, it, it's uh, 2024, man, is really the end of that, you know, and that's why I'm sharing some of these things um, just so that I can share with you some of the things that that I, before someone else tries to claim claim that it was their idea, not my grandfather's, not my uncle's or not mine. And really, when I say mine or ours, it's it's divine consciousness sharing through us. But it, it, you know, I just don't dig it when people are claiming it's their discovery. Oh, we found this place, and and then twist the story. It just, just hasn't been cool over the decades. And, uh, and my grandfather and uncles aren't here to defend themselves. Uh, not that they would need to, but they're not here to set the story straight. So I'm here to do that. I appreciate you guys. I guess I'm gonna get off because I've probably just talked too much and uh, went goofy. Um, I'm signing out, I guess. Let me, real quick, let me know what, what what would you like me to log on here and share with you guys? Or what do you guys want to talk about? What do you want to know? I can tell you right now that somebody's wearing red sneakers. I know that. Thank you, too. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. Aaron's Energy 313. Um... Uh, in India, Mesoamerica, South American Prince Cycles, Hama. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Veracocha, Quetzalcoatl, all of the above. Uh, no doubt. I mean, really, we have that theme, right? We have that information. We have those stories. And I believe within each one of us, each one of us right here, right now, and all of those who are within the listening distance of this voice, Absolutely, we have the ability to transcend death. Why? Because not only have we been taught that by the sages of the ages, Jesus Christ didn't die for me. Jesus Christ proved death had no power over me, right? That's the teaching for me of Christ, one of the many teachings, one of the many teachings of, of, of the sages of the ages, that we have the ability to transcend and transmute, call it alchemy, call it transfiguration, call it quantum physics, call it string theory, call it wave theory, whatever your heart desires, call it whatever word you want to use. But the reality is, is that nobody here right now listening to me can ever say they remember not remembering. Basically, you have existed for eternity because you can't remember not existing. Anyway, my wife is off to the side saying, so God bless you guys. 
And um, when I say God, my idea of God is just it's just the one that I can verbalize because as a lot of you know, it's it's the non verbalized uh, that we speak of. <laughs> but divine mind consciousness. Right. But all in all, like God is all in all. There is nothing but God. And if that be true, then we are one with God. We are in God. God is in us. It, it is like the only substance is God. Only intelligence is God. Only mind is God. In some magical way, we get to have this individualized adventure to have these cool ass mysteries to keep us interested, having fun, um, and unfolding on this divine, divine plan of existence. So, all right. God bless you guys. Uh, personally, I love the metaphysical. LOL. Me too. Uh, me too. Uh, because it's in the metaphysical that we get to, that, that we then experience the things that we are imagining, right? Into third dimension. So I appreciate you guys and um, tell a friend, uh, alphabet, this should be an old alphabet commercial, tell a friend, right? And let them know that, uh, that we're doing some stuff here. Shoot me some messages, maybe even in the comments. Um, let me know some of the subjects that you guys want to want to cover or you want me to share. Um, if you've got any friends that have got any YouTube channels that you really dig, tell them to have me on their channel. I'm down. I'm down. So, all right, you guys, thank you very much. Have a blessed Friday, and I will talk to you all soon. All right. Uh, from the Dillman, Dillman headquarters, underground bunker, whatever we call it, um, till we meet again somewhere deep within the cosmos.